Honda on and off road motorcycles. 70 to 350 cc. Going to uh, be completely beefing up these brakes and making them better. See, the brakes that come on the XR, it's not that they're necessarily bad. They were fine for what it was built for, you know, running across the desert. Convert to a supermoto like this, and now it's the complete opposite. We want a lot of front brake. The Warp 9 kit already gives you this oversized rotor, gives you a relocation bracket, but we want to take it even further than that. Let me show you what we got. Moto Master set us up with this super fast brake kit. It actually says supermoto on it. We got a, a master cylinder here, caliber. Big old giant rotor, and then uh, we got Core Moto brake lines. They set us up with that too. Thank you, Core Moto. Thank you, Moto Master. This stuff is awesome. Bike's gonna have a silly amount of brakes. How a caliper, a caliper. Now we already have a big floating rotor on the bike, uh, but Moto Master has their own big floating rotor. Moto Master rotor is just a little bit thicker than the Warp 9 rotor because it's all a kit and comes together. It's probably better to run this rotor, but there is a little problem with that. See, this is a six bolt pattern and this is a four bolt pattern. It turns out Warp 9, they adapt a CR, CRF rim. So you have this different bolt pattern. Ultimately, it's a good thing. The, the XR has this weird 32 spoke rear rim. Now it's a normal 36 spoke. It's got this four bolt pattern up here instead of a six bolt pattern. Like I said, Moto Master set me up with all this stuff. Uh, at least their US distributor did. And they're now no longer their US distributor. I guess they're changing to a new company right now. I have contacted like the main Moto Master. I think they're out of Germany or whatever. And uh, I haven't heard back yet. I imagine this is a temporary thing. So I'm just gonna have to run the Warp 9 rotor. If you're gonna be watching this and you're from Moto Master, please uh, look for my business email in the description and uh, say what's up. I think before I put this all on though, I would like to try to actually explain to you why this is good, if that makes sense. The Warp 9 and Moto Master rotor are both a 320. Uh, I have another just steel one here to give you an idea what those look like. Just show you what we're talking about. There's a lot bigger rotor here. There's a handful of reasons why this is better than this, but I'm going to try to focus in on just the main two. You know, when you brake, you have to turn your forward energy essentially into heat and then dissipate that through the rotor. Well, the more rotor area you have, the more you can dissipate heat. Also, as a side note real quick, the reason we have a floating rotor instead of running the solid rotor is because of our big brake upgrades, we know we're going to generate a lot more heat, and a floating rotor actually will let it expand slightly. I think the more immediate thing you're going to feel, the more noticeable thing when you actually grab the brake, why this is going to feel stronger, is because of leverage. So let's just pretend, for instance, this wheel is going around and around. Let's say you have to stop it, and this is the leverage you have. This is like the stock rotor, okay? Go to the big rotor, and suddenly it's like this. Basically what's happening when you go to a bigger rotor with leverage over the wheel. I know technically, some engineer will probably say, that's not exactly the right way to something something and those aren't the exact physics I know but this should give you a rough idea if you can imagine a little rotor you have small bit of leverage big rotor you have big leverage just putting one of these on the bike alone an oversized rotor will make the brakes feel way better but wait there's more let's take a look at the actual calipers itself it's shiny so clearly it's better factory brake is this uh, two piston caliber the way these work is you've got two pistons on one side right here this thing has some movement in it what actually happens is all your braking power comes from one side look at this thing trying to turn that momentum and to friction into heat and slow you down it's good for your skin some good old just brake cleaner right up the moto master kit here is giving you this big four piston caliber so you actually have pistons on all four sides so there's none of this shifting around. Think of this as like you trying to shake someone's hand and then like Andre the Giant. Are we just gonna clamp the, the rotor as it spins by here or are we gonna go Argh! like I'm getting it all dirty now. Oh my god. But you have a more beefy caliper now. You need a more beefy master cylinder to operate it. Moto Master's got you covered there too. This is a 12 millimeter uh, radial brake. You can either push the piston in this direction where it's like this. A little more direct. As you can see the piston is right here and we're driving it directly in with the motion of our hand. A little bit better brake feel. Here's a bigger piston here, which you're gonna be able to drive a bigger caliper. I don't wanna just go to a massive master cylinder too. You need to balance it all out. Like if you put a 20 millimeter master cylinder on your bike, it would be one, really hard to pull because you'd be doing so much work so fast and the brakes would be overly sensitive. What's nice is uh, Moto Master sort of pairs all this stuff together. When you go look up your bike, they're gonna have a list of parts for it. And those parts they know all work really well together. And of course to link that bad caliper with that badass master cylinder we've got our steel braided brake lines here from Cormoto. Steel braided brake lines are great for a number of reasons mainly because they come in really pretty colors. Every time I install these now I always get a handful of comments saying that these are actually not worth it and they really only belong on a race vehicle. You won't be able to really tell the difference on your street machine. I finally figured out why where those comments come from. 
and they come from Engineering Explained. He did a whole video on steel braided lines and basically said, yeah, oh, they're not really worth it, you know, and uh, one, I think he's referring to cars, that their rubber lines are really short, they only have a very small amount of brake line on them, where the motorcycle's got a long rubber brake line to expand and make the brakes feel squishy. You get a handful of brake, that rubber line's going to expand a little and make the brakes feel a little more spongy, and they just don't last as long either. The steel braided ones are lifetime guaranteed. These will outlast the motorcycle. I like that guy's channel. I think it's really cool. But I do hear him occasionally say stuff that it's like makes me go, okay, you, you have an engineering degree, it sounds like. You don't have practical experience with some of your stuff. Sorry, they do work. They make a huge difference. Anybody who's swapped nothing else but just the brake line and went for a ride before and after knows how crazy good the brakes feel after you switch to that steel line. You're gonna get some of the, go with the core motor ones because they do have that warranty. They have all that UV protection. Not all of them have those. They have it. Cool stuff. And apparently they're DOT approved. Not really tightening up right here, just snugging for the moment. We're gonna put this in without the pads in. In fact, to take this on and off, you'll probably typically have to pull the pads out. Because this is such a big rotor and we've gone to a 17 inch rim and we have the spoked wheel back here, which means this is a little tighter than it would be on a normal wheel. This is all very tight. This is why it'd be really hard to just grab any random four piston caliber and shove it on a supermoto. They even have to taper the ends here to make it easier to fit in. So gently slip this in here. Don't scratch your pretty new wheel. And lightly. Just spin the wheel and make sure that these bolts, the ends of these bolts are coming nowhere close to the rotor. It means we have the good hardware in here. That's some Mickey Mouse crap. You need to check that the rotor is actually in line with the caliper. The caliper is two halves bolted together. Center line right here between the two of them. What we want to do is make sure it's lining up right in the middle of the rotor, which it is perfect. That means we don't have to do any alignment on the caliper, but I want to show you how you would do that. This looks just like a washer, right? It's incredibly thin. Uh, you can get little packs of these. These are basically little shims to actually help adjust the caliper. I will pull each bolt out one at a time and put just a little dab of Loctite on them. Not a ton and especially not on these bolts since we'll have to remove them to remove the wheel. Pull this banjo bolt out real quick just so you can see better. Our new brake pads, super conveniently, actually just slide in from right here. That just feels so quality. Now this is uh, this is race stuff, a lot of it, you know? I mean, like being able to quickly pull the pads and change them is something beneficial if you were racing. Race brakes, but on the street. For mad stoppies. So I don't have anything else on here, like the throttle tube, which is coming soon. Don't really know exactly where to place this, so I'm not gonna clamp it super tight at the moment. Somewhere like that. The Koromoto brake line kits are great because you include all the little rubber grommets you need and perfectly replace your factory brake lines. But when you're running a complete aftermarket brake setup, it'd be a little bit hairy. And I didn't actually know if these were gonna work until uh, they actually came in. One of the first things I was concerned about was the actual banjo bolt. The Motomaster ones actually have tighter threads on it, so you have to use their banjo bolts. But I've gone through here, I've used the calibers, I've measured up all the distances. Outside of the thread pitch being different, Everything else is the same. They're all the exact same size. The other thing that you do when you get a core motor brake lines is you actually have to turn and align these little ends up, the banjos on the end here, to match your stock brake lines. So normally, what you do is you set your stock brake line out here next to it, and you'd see where these uh, banjos are facing, and then you would adjust them to match the stock brake line. Everything is different on our setup, so what we're gonna have to do is kind of stick it up on there, figure out where it's all gonna line up, and make it work. When you're building your own supermoto, you know, not everything is always just gonna be a bolt-on by the book thing. Sometimes you have to kind of see how things are lining up, adjust things, tweak things. Nothing is ever just bolted on and go. One of the first things we'll have to figure out is how we're gonna run the clamp. The OEM way of doing that is to run it behind the back side here. It would be ideal if we could run it this way just because the brake line is a little more protected from getting snagged on anything. But typically with supermotos, you're not gonna be able to do that. This has some adjustability to it, so I'm kind of playing with it now and seeing if it's, since it's a little lower in the line, maybe I can run it on the back side. I think I'm pretty far out from the brake line at this point, so. Okay, cool. Normally we would rotate these things first, but like I said, we're kind of figuring this one out as we go, so I'm gonna actually go ahead and bolt this in. Banjo bolt with a crush washer, and then a second crush washer on the other side. Not going to 100% tighten it down yet, but I think we're gonna look for yeah, something about like that. It's somewhat adjustable, so we can actually kind of move this here. That'll keep the brake line far from the rotor. It also works out to our benefit that we have the conventional forks, where if this was the other way around, we couldn't have the brake line resting against the fork like this. 
a clamp. It's grabbing the brake line very, very tightly. I'm afraid if I tighten it down, it's gonna start to crush the uh, tube. What I've decided to do is put some very small washers. You can imagine that'll give it slightly a slightly wider clamping area. So I found some very small washers that'll fit in there. The problem is you gotta find washers that are small enough. They won't protrude you know, into where the brake line sits. Pretty small little washers, they'll do the job. They're just slightly too small for the bolt to go through it. So I'm just gonna... A lot of things to line up now. Oh. The brake line needs to come up and attach. You see there's this kink in the brake line that, well, once it's flipped the other way, would actually be really helpful to us, but <laughs> currently is completely the other way around. These banjos are adjustable. I'll show you the industry secret tool for adjusting them. Um, these are very special plastic pins. They may look like normal uh, big pins, but they're not. What you would do is you'd actually flex the whole thing one way or another and uh, they'll turn, and then the plastic won't mar anything up. Not trying to be lazy, but I think I can do it with it on the bike right now since the bottom end is clamped. If this goes terribly wrong, I'm an idiot, I should have done that. That looks so pro. Like, I know this was definitely meant for a different type of uh, master cylinder where it came out this way, but this is actually working out really well. I think having that extra two inches added was a really good idea. The routing of the brake line is looking pretty good here. Now let's do the rear. Of course, it just dawned on me when I go to put this brake lever back on. It's gonna be somewhat in the way of this cover. Here we have this pretty one to put on. We coded sent this to me. I got one for the other side, one for a cover here. We're gonna put this one on right now though. Good chance that these are all kinds of different lengths. So you need to make sure you're not gonna get them out of order. Now, what I normally would do is I'll pick like a bolt, like I'd say the most top bolt. I'll go in like clockwise order and I'll set them in, in below me on my chair. I've done that enough, I know I won't mix it all up. If you're really worried about that and you know, you want to be 100% sure, well you can make you one of these. As you pull the bolts out, stick them in as you go around and then you'll be just, just solid. Gotta take a brush here and knock some of the, uh, the junk off of these. That looks so nice. Previous episode, we tore apart the rear brake caliber, cleaned it all up, and uh, basically we're gonna try to do the same thing to this. Again, I probably should have bought like a rebuild kit for this thing, but yeah, we've already spent more money than I should have at this point, so. Uh... You don't want to leave this brake cleaner on any of these rubber parts for more than just a second. Seems to have cleaned up pretty good. You want to lubricate these parts before stick them back in, and you're going to lubricate them with brake fluid, which is going to dissolve these gloves slowly. Hopefully it's just not fast enough. We got a little sticker here that says rear calipers, so we know that that needs to go here. That's gonna have to come around a bit, so we need to turn them this way. That's all right. To make these brakes actually activate when we have all electronics on here, I'm gonna put a pressure sensor banjo bolt in the back here. We actually already had one on here, but it was really beat up and crappy looking, and I've got a dual sport kit coming when I get the stator back. It's gonna come with one of those. I'm just gonna go ahead though and set this in here. Won't crank it down or anything. Just kind of putting it in here as a placeholder. Uh, we'll have to bleed the brakes once that other part arrives. The little clips in here that hold the brake lines, the old ones were just brittle and they fell apart. I'm not gonna bother, like I said, bleeding the rear until we get that little uh, new master brake switch sensor thing. It looks like this one, but it'll be a new one because this one's all crudded up and crappy like everything else was on this bike. Since I got one coming, might as well use it. For the front brake, there's actually a little switch you can get 
Uh, so actually almost like how OEM brakes on a bikes work, you know, they got a brake switch. Didn't know about that, so I ordered it now. Now, I guess I can bleed the front right now, but my kid's taking a nap, and since I gotta charge up the compressor and bleed the rear, anyways, we'll do that. I'll use my fancy tool, because that tool's awesome. I think that's a good braking point. <laughs> I think that'll be it.